Hello, beautiful peaches. Welcome to the Macros, Metabolism, and Motivation Beautiful Peach Podcast. I'm your host, Caitlin, here to help you find your most unwavering love, beauty, and kindness for yourself inside and out. I will be teaching you nutrition and macro tracking secrets, reverse diet and metabolism health tips and tricks, and motivating the heck out of you so you want to leap up and start conquering your goals right away. I am here to help bring you the light at the end of the tunnel so you can discover that self-love and truly become the most confident, beautiful peach possible. So grab a pen and a piece of paper, or if you're in the car or at the gym, go ahead and bump up your volume just a little so we can drown out those gym grunters next to you and we can go ahead and dive right in. Don't forget to snag your completely free high protein macro cookbook by simply doing a five star rate and review on this podcast. All you need to do is submit a five star rate and review, then send us your name and email through the link in the show notes so we know exactly where to send your cookbook. By submitting your five star rate review, this will also automatically enter you into the weekly podcast macro calculator giveaway. Every week, I give away a copy of my C.U. Schmidt macro calculator to one lovely winner who leaves an awesome, awesome five-star rate and review. This winner is announced every week on my Instagram story as well as my newsletter email list. So leave that five-star rate and review and I'll see you in the episode. Hello, hello, my beautiful, beautiful peaches. Uh, Welcome to the Macros and Metabolism Beautiful Peach Podcast. Today, we are going to be talking all about the basics of tracking macros. I'm going to walk you through my personal journey with tracking macros and also how they can actually support your sustainable fat loss and food freedom goals. Very excited about today's episode. Tracking macros quite truly helped me heal my metabolism, restore my relationship with food. So going from a place where I was just stuck in these restrict and binge cycle to a place where I can go and I can eat the food that I want. I can have the margarita. I can have the burger and fries and have zero food guilt around it, knowing that I am going to wake up the next day feeling amazing in my body and right on track with my goals. And it allowed me to really take my life back. So tracking macros has been quite truly the best thing I have ever done for myself along with reverse dieting. And I am here to walk through the basics of macros, my personal story, and some tips for you to get you starting tracking with macros if macros are completely new to you or if you are somebody who has been tracking macros and maybe you're just wanting to know more or wanting to make sure that you are tracking them properly and calculating them properly. I will be walking through all of those. So without further ado, let's dive on in. Episode 94, Tracking Macros 101, A Beginner's Guide to Tracking Macros. One of the biggest things that makes me so sad in today's world is seeing you beautiful peaches suffer because of the big, bad, mean diet industry. It really makes me flustered and it's hard to see you missing out on your life, having the low energy so you're not able to go out with your friends, having all the energy, feeling really good in your body, not being able to even take the small walks with your significant other. Walking for Colton and I has been one of the times that we are just able to really reconnect and, or I shouldn't say even reconnect, we just have that connection level of time away from our phones. We leave our phones at home for the most part. Sometimes we take just one of them just in case of emergency, but it's that time to really just be together and to go over what happened in the day to get some fresh air. And it's just, it's been really nice for us. And I know just in talking with a lot of my clients and talking with a lot of my friends, that's a very common thing for couples to do. And I think it's something that's really special, but I've also heard of so many women who are coming to me, not having the energy to even go for those walks with their significant other. And it's taking that time away from them. I've also had many, many women really struggling with not wanting to uh, take their kids to get ice cream or not having the energy to play and run around with them. And it's starting to impact them on a deeper level more than just not being able to lose that weight, not being able to get into a place where they're having all this food freedom, but it's also impacting their energy and the way that they're showing up for those in their life. I also see many, many women who their libido is impacted. So they have a lowered libido, deep, deep, deep body insecurities, that little 
fun time with your partner becomes a little bit less fun because we do have those deep body insecurities. And a lot of times they also have women who are feeling like a bad role model to their children because they're not able to show up and show their children this amazing relationship with food. And they're coming to me saying, hey, I've got to change this. I want to change this now so my kids can grow up feeling amazing in their body and having this amazing relationship with food. Before macros, I was very, very much in a similar space, and I was actually eating around give or take 600 to 1,000 calories a day. I was binging weekly, if not more. I was bouncing from diet to diet, and a lot of times I would say, I'm just eating healthy. I'm just going to go low fat. I'm just going to eat blank number of calories. The list truly goes on and on and on. I was insecure in my own skin. I was quite truly at war with my body feeling like food was the enemy, having all of the food anxiety on top of the social anxiety due to that food anxiety and the fear of getting off track. And after macros, I was able to really take my life back to heal my metabolism, eating well, well, well over 2,000 calories and just completely free of the dieting world, free of the binge eating. One of the biggest things for me that has been a constant, continuous reminder of the freedom that tracking macros has given me is every single time I go on a vacation, every single year when the holidays come around, I get excited because I know how to have all of the holiday cookies. I know how to host the holiday parties, have the fun cocktails. I know how to travel to wake up on Christmas morning and eat that piece of chocolate that good old Santa brought me and just feel really good in my body without the fears of getting off track or the fears of having to start over after the holidays. New Year's resolutions, honestly, in the past for me became this daunting experience of, okay, now I have to sit down and create these resolutions. And I started to feel bad because it was the same exact thing that I was doing every single year. Okay, I want this goal. I want this goal. And I want this goal. And every single year, it was the same exact resolution. I had actually not gotten anywhere, even though it felt like I was working my absolute butt off because I was working my absolute butt off to try and see those actual goals come true, but I wasn't actually doing the proper methods to get me there. So after tracking macros, completely changed my life, allowed me not only to hit those resolutions, but also I personally am not a big resolutions person. I think that a lot of times they can cause us to create a lot of stress around our goals. I am more of a person, and I'm actually going to walk through this, what changed, what that shift was for me, even outside of the New Year's resolutions. I'll do a podcast episode on that closer to New Year's. We're closing in on the end of the year, which is super fun, and I'm just so excited. But I think what's really important is creating a lifestyle rather than just a New Year, New Me resolution and creating a lifestyle that allows you to step into this next chapter of your life where you're not having the same New Year's resolutions again and again and again. So I feel amazing in my body. Macros changed my life. And I really want to talk through what changed for me to help me go from that 600 calories, 700 calories, that very, very low calorie intake, all the way up to 2000 plus calories while feeling absolutely amazing in my body, completely thriving, changing my relationship with food. And I want to walk you through the action steps that I have personally taken, as well as thousands of clients at this point who have also had the same experience. The very first thing that I did was I made a true decision that I wanted to change. I was ready to change. I am ready to go. I'm going to make this happen. When you are in a space where you are ready to make that change happen, it is going to make a little switch turn on in our mind. And we're like, no, I am not going to give up. I'm going to do this for me and also for those around me because it does impact those around me. I realized that I was doing, it was not working. No matter how hard I was working out of the gym, no matter how low of a calorie intake I was eating, I was miserable and it wasn't working. So what I did was I actually started to unlearn the diet mentality that I have previously learned. And I will admit, I didn't do this all on my own. One of my biggest, biggest things that helped me was I actually asked for help. I reached out to a coach at the time. This is actually, I think, close to when, so for my background, I am just for my education. I, I mentioned this on a lot of my episodes, but it's really helpful to know just because it's part of my story. So when I went to college, I went to Clemson University, go Tigers. I actually was going with the intention of becoming either a dentist or an orthodontist. So I had a biology major. I had braces for a little over eight years, braces retainer, like the whole nine yards. I had a killer overbite, had headgear for a little while. Didn't actually have to wear that in public, which was great, but I had to wear it at night. But I really wanted to go into a space where I could help others have pretty beautiful teeth and feel really good there. In that journey, I 
started to really struggle with my relationship with food, turned to a place where I was in a very bad mentality. Food overtook my entire life. It was impacting my family. I have experiences of my family crying because of how unhappy I was and how much it was impacting them. Things you don't realize is impacting those around you starts to show up and you're like, oh my gosh, my own personal lack of taking care of myself is starting to impact those around me. I had friends come and visit me who were going to other colleges just to check in on me and to make sure that I was okay because they could see me and they could tell by our phone calls and our text messages that I just wasn't okay. And so in that time, I had really picked up all of the diet mentality. I was creating my own diet boxes, whether that was, okay, well, now I can't eat fat. I can't eat carbs. Carbs are the devil. Sugar is terrible. Alcohol is terrible. All of these things creating my own diet guidelines that didn't actually make sense. And what happened was I created this very wide variety of a diet mentality that I had to start unlearning each and every single one of those pieces. So at that point, this is before I switched my major to nutrition and dietetics with the intention of working as a dietitian in a hospital. And I actually started working with a coach who was, I would like to say, the catalyst of the changes that I started to see happen. And it was incredible to start to have that kind of switch, that little catalyst happening, realizing that it's okay for me to ask for help. Doing it on my own wasn't working. I was creating more problems than I should have. And fast forward, I ended up changing my major into nutrition and dietetics, went on to get my master's degree in exercise science, sports nutrition, wrote my master's thesis on macros, on reverse dieting, on the human metabolism. So very impressive catalyst there. And it was very life-changing for me. But my main point here is when I decided that I wanted to change, I went all in and I realized I needed a change in the right way. Now, it didn't mean going from one diet to the next. It actually meant for me to start to unlearn the diet mentality, to take a step away from those diets and to start to find the education behind my body and how my body works in order to make that next chapter of my life become one where I'm not bouncing from diet to diet. And that leads me into my step two here is education. Education quite truly opened my eyes to the real reason that I never, ever, ever saw results. My metabolism was destroyed. TMI, but we're all women here. So I was at the gynecologist the other day, and we're just talking all things women health. And we got into the discussion of the human metabolism and how a lot of her patients coming in are having a really hard time losing weight. They're eating 900 calories. They're eating 1,200 calories. And she's like, oh, my gosh, talking to you is absolutely incredible because you are the solution that these women need. She said, this is not my expertise. Are you okay if I start referring you people? And it's one of those things where it was an aha moment for her of, oh my gosh, yes, this all makes sense. And it's one of those moments where it's the realization of how education can truly change your life. And even talking with her, I'm asking her questions about my body. I'm asking her questions about such a variety of things. And she is educating me as I am also educating her. Obviously, I wasn't there to educate her, but I get really nerdy and I get really excited. And it's one of those things where when we're learning about the human body and we're learning the what, the why, and the how, it allows us to really open our eyes so we can disconnect from the diet industry. And it allows us to take all of those diet rules and start to remove them slowly but surely. It takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to just break all the diet mentality overnight. But the thing is, I was in a place where I wasn't able to live in the moment. I was fearful all the time. I was stressed out. I was unhappy. The diet rules quite literally ruled my life. And so as I was able to slowly but surely have the education behind what's going on with my body, it allowed me to step into that place where I was truly free. And I'm going to walk you through all of the education. I know there's a lot of background behind my story, but I think it's really helpful because that allows you to see where I was, which is in a very similar place, I'm sure, to where you are right now. And it allows you to see the steps that I took that were not easy in any way, shape, or form. However, if I had not taken them, I would be sitting here in the same space, probably I don't know what I would be doing with my life, but I would be very unhappy in a diet world. I would not be sitting here educating at this point like thousands and thousands and thousands of women. And it's so cool to see how your life and the complete trajectory, not saying that you need to go and change your job or go back to school or anything, but I'm here to help you change your own happiness because that can very much change the trajectory of your life. I've had clients in the past who 
and weren't going on dates because they felt really bad in their body and they ended up feeling amazing in their body, meeting the love of their life and getting married. And it like makes me emotional. I've had clients in the past who are like, I am actually living my life, but meeting the love of their life, having this amazing time with their kids, restoring their relationship with their significant other, restoring their relationship with friends and family. And it is life changing. But number three, I realized that I needed a sustainable, maintainable, educational and enjoyable solution. If it's not naturally fitting into your life, if you're not happy, if food is controlling you, then that is not a life to live. But we need something that's going to be sustainable, maintainable, educational, and enjoyable. And then the fourth thing here is putting myself first. I go on and on and on about this. And especially for women, we are taught to not put ourselves first. I see generations changing this. And I see you incredible women who are wanting to change that and who are wanting to take care of ourselves. And I had this realization if my mom or my sister or a future daughter or a friend was struggling, I would encourage them to put themselves first. So why wasn't I encouraging myself to put myself first? When our cup is not full, we're going to start to pull from other people's cups. And so we want our cups so incredibly full that it's overflowing into those around us, into our friends, into our family, into our children, into our careers into our happiness. We want to wake up every day feeling so good in our body, so good in what we're doing that it is overflowing. We want that. And last but not least, I actually do have a five here in my notes, but I stopped Googling and this actually goes up into my education piece. I stopped Googling because Google quite truly is overwhelming and it causes a lot of people to have decision fatigue, the overwhelm so much to where we just stop and like don't take any steps forward. So I invested resources that would actually help me fast track where I was. I tell all these stories all the time, but a lot of times it creates more problems than it really needs to. And it takes away time because now we are doing so much research on our own. We're on Google. We're on all these different things. We're saving all these things on Instagram that we never go back to anyway. And we're overwhelmed. We're struggling and we're not seeing changes happen, which creates frustration, which makes us fall off the wagon and we are starting over. So for me, it was really important for me to just stop Googling and to actually invest in resources that are solid education-backed resources. I found a coach back then. And I highly encourage you, find a coach, whether that's me or whether that's somebody else. But please do make sure that they are someone who clicks with you, someone who understands you, someone who has the educational background, because it allow you to really get into a place where you are also being educated, which is very, very important. I want to interrupt this oh-so-lovely podcast episode of mine to let you know that the Food, Freedom, and Macro Guide is available to you completely free. This guide holds the answers you need to end the macro mystery and learn why nothing else has ever worked long-term. With macros and your human factor, you can have your cake and eat it too. Live your life instead of wasting every day hyper-focused on all of the stress on what you can and cannot eat. This food freedom and macro guide will give you clarity on what macros are and the role that they play in your metabolism. You'll learn why macros are so important to keep your body functioning properly and how we actually use these and your human factor to see the changes that you want. You'll be able to discover the anti-diet world and how we use macros to eat the food that we love every day. If you're ready for endless food freedom and want to take a deep dive into macros, this guide is for you. Go ahead down to the show notes and grab your guide today. Let's go into macros so I don't get too off track here. The quick rundown of the term macros. Macros is the shortened term for the word macronutrient. Macronutrients is the nutrition category for our protein, our carbs, and our fats. Our protein, our carbs, and our fats are what all food that we consume is made up of. So when we say we're tracking our macros, aka tracking our macronutrients, simply means that we are tracking our protein, our carbs, and our fats. Pretty darn easy when you break it down. I've had people reach out and they're like, tracking macros, what does that even mean? I'm like, I got you. I know it's confusing. I got you. So when looking at a nutrition label, and I actually do, for those of you who do have my macro calculator, my C. Schmidt macro calculator, I'll put that down in the show notes as well. If you're somebody who wants to figure out where your metabolism sits and actually have the proper macros for yourself, I have a C. Schmidt macro calculator and I will drop that down in the show notes so you're able to snag that. There is a video in there that actually walks you through a nutrition label, but to give you the rundown verbally here. So when you're looking at a nutrition label, Sometimes people will look at their sugar and start to obsess over that. And if they're one gram over, it's complete stress. It's complete chaos. 
I actually recommend not even paying attention to sugar. I recommend, yes, eat in moderation. Yes, have the sugar. Maybe don't eat cupcakes and bonbons for every meal. But if you want a cupcake, have your cupcake and then also eat all your nutrient-dense foods. But when you're looking at a nutrition label, we've got our protein. So I say pay attention to your protein on that label. Pay attention to the fat. Pay attention to the carbs. But don't pay attention to net carbs. Pay attention to the total carbs, okay? When it comes to tracking macros, I think a lot of times, too, it is like the gateway to allowing your body to heal. If you have been doing any kind of diet, there's a high chance that there may be some sort of nutrient deficiency. Even things like whole food, there are quite truly nutrition deficiencies that can come from any kind of diet there is out there, which is why I am such a firm believer of tracking our macros. And it doesn't have to be long term. I'll talk about that later on as well. I had somebody actually the other day ask me what my method was, I think she said, or if I'm part of 21 Day Fix or something. And I was like, oh, no, sweet girl, I'm teaching you what happens to our body. I am not part of any kind of diet. That is a hard path. And I was like, my method is the way that our body works. Anyway, I think one of the big problems about the diet industry is they showcase these not quick fixes, but yes, quick fixes at the same time, because they say, hey, you can lose 10 pounds in 10 days for this holiday party, but they don't actually show the binge eating. They don't actually show the weight regain. They don't show all of that extra crazy. And it drives me absolutely bonkers. But it's important to knowing that the diet industry, it's going to like twist the truth a little bit for you. So when we have the importance of protein, carbs, and fat, you can see these diets out there that are saying, hey, this is going to be a low fat or low carb or whatever it may be. And you can say, no, but actually we don't want to do that because blank and that blank I'm about to teach you. So walking over the importance of our protein, our carbs, and our fat, I'm actually going to go through each and every single one of these. So protein, a lot of people know about, they're very aware and they think this is the only macro that they need to be eating at protein. That's false. You need carbs and fat, but protein is amazing because it keeps us full. Protein is amazing for muscle growth and recovery. And essentially when our intake for protein is too low or we're just not consuming enough protein at all, what's going to happen is our body is actually going to be in a mode called catabolic, which means that we are actually in a fat storing and muscle depleting. So using our muscle for energy. So when we're not having enough protein, whether that is in we are in a massive calorie deficit and we're just like simply not eating protein, our body is going to start to store fat and it's actually going to start to use our hard earned muscle as energy. So we want to make sure, yes, we are absolutely getting energy when we have enough protein coming into play. Um, we're going to be using our fat for energy, our carbs for energy. We're going to be building muscle and this is called anabolic mode. And this is why tracking macros is a game changer because when we have enough protein, carbs and fat, we're allowing our body to go into whatever goal we may want to reach. We're, we're going for that goal. Carbs. This is going to be our main source of energy, both in the gym and outside of the gym. When our carb intake is too low, keto, as an example, is low carb. It's going to cause energy crashes during the day. And also you might wake up in the morning not having a lot of energy. You may wake up throughout the night. You may have those energy crashes throughout the day. So you're going to have that disrupted sleep-wake cycle as well as energy crashes throughout the day. A lot of people stress about carbs because they initially see weight loss happen when they do something like keto, and they immediately think carbs were what caused the weight loss to happen, but it was actually the overall calorie deficit, not the carbs specifically. Sure, yes, the carbs in the sense that that's what you cut out, so that's where the calorie deficit came from. However, you cut out your protein or your fat and had the same reaction. So we want to make sure we're having enough carbs in our body, and also when it comes to having that energy and feeling really good, when we have the proper protein, carbs, and fat, we're going to be in a spot where we know we are, again, reaching our goals or aiming for those goals. We like to adjust our macros too. Fat 101. I love fat. And so many people think that like when we consume fat, it's going to be stored immediately as fat on our body. I wish that fat that we consume had a different name, honestly, because they are unrelated in the sense of if we consume fat, we're not going to just immediately have it storing as fat. If we are over consuming food as a whole and we're over consuming over where our metabolism sits, that is when the fat gain starts, okay? Which is why a lot of women, when they're eating 1,200 calories and they start to eat more than that, they're like, what's going on? Why am I seeing weight regain? And it's because your metabolism sits at 1,200 calories. And so now you're eating in a surplus compared to that, which then you go into a reverse diet. Now, when it comes to fat, it's going to support our hormonal balance in our body. It's going to be a secondary source of energy and it's going to keep you satisfied, keep you full. So I have a really cool example for you and I actually challenge you guys to check this out. I haven't brought this example up in a long time. It's in the course that I actually give my BPM clients. So they are always like, oh, it's cool. I looked at the grocery store. 
low-fat foods actually have the same calorie intake or very similar calorie intakes to regular fat foods, which is pretty wild. So anything that is going to be low fat, you actually have to add something else in there to maintain the consistency of that food item. So you can't just remove fat and have it removed, right? Food has a reason why it has certain consistencies, why it works together in recipes. Why do you make bread? How does that come together? And so when you remove fat, something else has to be added in to maintain that consistency, which usually is going to be protein and it's usually going to be carbs. So when you're taking out fat, you're adding something else in, meaning the calorie intake is exactly the same. So when we're saying we're going low fat, I think people assume low fat means low calorie, and that's not really the way that it works. Look at Jif Creamy Peanut Butter and compare it to Jif Reduced Fat Creamy Peanut Butter. So you'll see that the Jif Creamy Peanut Butter is 16 fat, 8 carbs, 7 protein, and overall 190 calories. The Reduced Fat Creamy is 12 fat, 15 carbs, 7 protein, and 190 calories. So same exact calorie intake, just a different macro makeup, which is pretty crazy. It's so wild to me that people just assume that low fat immediately means, okay, this is going to help me lose weight. And it's just, no, it's not really how that works. There's people who do low fat in the sense where they're just like, I'm not going to eat peanut butter, period. But also then you're compensating hormonal balance, secondary energy source, extra source to keep you full and satisfied. And it's important to make sure that we're having our protein, carbs, and our fat. That's the background of protein, carbs, and fat. Now, when it comes to actually calculating our macros, there is a huge no-no that I really encourage you guys to stay away from. So when it comes to calculating macros, one of the biggest things that I see people do is go to Google and they say, how to calculate my macros or my fitness pal, and you just type in your height, your weight, your age, activity factor. There's a very specific method when it comes to actually calculating our macros. And it's really important to follow correct methods to make sure you do have adequate protein, adequate carbs, and adequate fat. A lot of those macro calculators where you just type in your height, your weight, your age, and activity factor are actually going to not pay attention to what I call human factor. And if you go to my macro calculator page, the link in the bio, there's a little note in there all about human factor. But it's essentially your metabolism, your body, your goals, your past diet history, all of these different pieces that are really important to take into account when it comes to your metabolic health and when it comes to proper macros. So what happens when you plug your information in, say, for example, my fitness pal, is nine times out of 10, it just automatically puts people at 1200 calorie deficit, like without paying single attention to anything. And the problem is it's going to put you way too far in a calorie deficit to where it's going to actually start to impact your metabolism, slow down your metabolism. You might see some weight loss happen at first, and then you'll start to have that weight regain. Or number two, you might already be at a very low intake. It's actually going to end up putting your numbers higher than where you need to be, and then you'll have the weight regain happen. And also, you'll end up with macros that are not accurate for you, for your body, and for your goals. And every single person in the entire world is going to have a different metabolism, is going to have different human factors. So it's important to make sure that when we are calculating your macros, those are taken into account. Your best friend who may be the same height, weight, age, and activity factor, you're going to go to MyFitnessPal and tell you to track the same exact numbers. No, your metabolism is so incredibly different. That's just not the way that it works. What I usually suggest to do, and if you're just like really trying to figure out the basics, or if you're someone who's just like, I don't know if I want to track macros, I have a food freedom and macro guide. It's completely free and it will walk you through all, like all of the ins and outs of macros, actually going even more in depth than I did in this podcast episode. And it's very nice because you can like print it off. You can highlight things. You can take notes, but it will give you all those ins and outs. And if you're someone who's just, I don't know if I want to track macros, go grab that guide because it is a very, 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 very good place to start when it comes to deciding if you want to track macros. This being said, I encourage everybody in the world to track macros because I love them. And also you need to be ready, right? Like I was talking at the beginning of this episode, you need to be ready to commit. So if you're brand new and you're like, okay, well, I want to learn more about macros, go grab that. You will love, love, love it. If you're somebody who has been tracking macros, but you're not sure if they're correct, or you want to track macros and you have not been tracking, you can go snag my C. Schmidt macro calculator. I will also drop that down in the show notes for you. And then from there, what you can do is learn to start tracking food with no nutrition information, learn to start tracking when traveling, 
or not traveling or not tracking. I have a whole entire method for this as well. I teach all of that in BPM because it is higher level. When it comes to navigating the real world scenarios, for me as a coach, I find it extremely important to make sure that I have that communication with you because you can tell me, hey, I've got this three-day weekend trip coming up. Here's what we're doing. Let's walk through a game plan. And I can help you learn how to navigate those situations so you're able to confidently navigate that again in the future. I had somebody actually who reached out for BPM and enrolled in BPM. And she was asking me about going into the holidays and she was nervous about time. And in my personal opinion, coaching clients during the holidays is actually my absolute favorite time to work with clients because we are completely immersed in the real world scenarios of holidays, usually of vacations, usually of holiday parties, of extra foods that you might consider bad food being around, more triggers around to cause the binge eating, which gives us so much space to help you start healing in a way that feels absolutely amazing. So you can go through the holidays without feeling like you have to start over without trying to restrict leading up to the holiday parties or in through the holidays and allow you to actually make memories during the holiday season for the first time ever and not have the food guilt while seeing changes happen to your body while feeling absolutely amazing. So I highly suggest if you are wanting to wait to track macros until after the holidays, do it now. I'm telling you right here and now, it will be absolutely amazing for you. And so the fact that tracking macros are the absolute best way to get to where we want to go, to heal our metabolism, to lose weight and keep it off, to feel absolutely amazing in our body, to heal our relationship with food, yeah, is for sure the best way to get there. With all this, I really, really, really want to encourage you guys to reach out to me, number one. If, if you have any questions or something personal that you want to walk through and you're like, hey, I just want the affirmation that I should be tracking macros. I just want the affirmation that I need a reverse diet, I am here to give you that affirmation. I love affirmations. I love hearing what's going on with you and being able to walk through what's happening so I can say, hey, yeah, here's oh, your next step should be a reverse diet. So nothing's stopping you but our own excuses and our own stressors or our decision fatigue. Take a step forward and know that, no, it's not always going to be easy. But once we move that step forward, that's when the change actually starts to happen. If it were easy, everybody would be perfectly happy. The world would be just la-di-da all the time. And that's just not the way that it works. My favorite quote is, nothing worth having comes easy. And it's true on so many levels. And also, when you put in the work and you get to where you want to go, you can look back and you can feel so insanely proud of yourself that you're like, okay, every single up and down was worth it. And it's because you are worth it. So take the deep dive. Start tracking macros. Reach out to me if you're just like, I need the affirmation. I am here for it. And just don't forget how worthy you are because you are so worthy of having all of the freedom inside and out. And I'm quite truly obsessed with you because you are here listening to me ramble on about my nerdy goodness. And also just a quick reminder, because it makes my heart so happy, we are actually nearing 100,000 downloads, which is absolutely insanely wild. What really helps is when you share this with friends and family, if you do a five-star rate and review, it is absolutely one of the best ways on the Apple Podcast app. I believe you can do it on Spotify as well, but best way for you to continue to share the love and the nerdy goodness is to share with friends and family. And I cannot tell you enough how much it makes me happy to hear that you enjoyed my episodes and just know that I'm always here for you. So with all this, as I always say, love and peaches. So all the love and peaches your way. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye, my beautiful peach.